In this video, we're gonna talk about some editing principles and the editing process. And we're gonna go break down that cool sequence you just saw. Editing is a bit like cutting down a tree and making a wood carving out of it with three steps, the chainsaw, the hatchet, and the scalpel. Each of these tools allows you to get smaller and smaller until you get your final product. The same thing with video editing. We're gonna use our tools to whittle it down all the way to our perfect video ready to put out into the world. The first step is the chainsaw. This is where you do all your heavy cutting, getting rid of all the bad takes and keeping only those good ones so that you can further edit and get your best final product. In this stage, along with taking out those bad clips, you're also gonna be taking out clips that just simply don't work well for your project. You might've taken a few video clips that you're like, yeah, this is gonna be great, but in the editing, you've realized this just isn't gonna work. It's not gonna flow well, and so you'll also take that out in this step. Step two is the hatchet. This is where you get a little bit more specific. You're breaking it up into smaller pieces and just kind of trimming down those clips that you've determined are good to just where you want it and starting to align them into the correct order of your film. Now at this point, your video is starting to come together as a nice sequence and it's beginning to look like a video. And step three is the scalpel. With the scalpel, this is where you're doing your fine cuts to get everything tuned right. This is where you're gonna do your color grading, your transitions, all the tiny little things that just wrap your project up into a nice little bow and make it look all nice and pretty to give to people. The scalpel is also generally the longest step, but it's usually where most of the fun happens. Let's go ahead and break down that opening sequence. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into this video project. This is a small section of a short film that I'm working on called The Last to Fall. So I'll go ahead and link that in the description down below so that you can check out the full short film. This is the timeline for the full short film, but we're gonna just take a look at that small section of it that you saw at the beginning of this video. Also, just one thing to note is I do have proxies on throughout this video. So if you don't know what a proxy is, basically it is a worse version kind of a, a lower resolution version of the video clip that you're using. That way your system can handle it better. And then when you export, you turn off proxies and it will export in hi the high quality video, but you're able to edit with the lower quality video so that it loads better and uh, your system just runs more smoothly. So you'll see that with proxies disabled, since I was using anamorphic lens for the short film, it's stretched out and it looks really nice but the proxies look a little bit off on this. So that's just something to note. If it looks a little weird and compressed throughout this video, that's because I have the proxies on. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our chainsaw step. So in this, you're gonna organize your footage and kind of break it down to the best kind of clips. So to do that, we wanna start by actually figuring out where we're putting our video clips. And I would recommend editing and putting all your files onto an external SSD. I have a SanDisk uh, SSD that I use and I'll have that linked in the description. I'm gonna go ahead and jump straight into our editing software, but just be aware that I organize the bins in the editing software the same as I organize my folders on my hard drive. So when organizing my bins, I have kind of my main section here where I have my different timelines. And as you can see, I have multiple timelines because it's okay to create a timeline and then feel like you wanna get a little bit risky with something. So you duplicate the timeline so that you can go and make that risky change and see if it worked out. And if it didn't work out, you can just go back to the previous timeline that you were working on. So I keep my timelines here. I just have my kind of channel logo here that I use at the end. But when I separate my footage, I have an audio file and a file for my footage. I first separate it based off camera. So I only used one camera for this short film, my Sony a7S III. So I only have one folder there, but if I had more cameras like my drone or my GoPro, I would also have folders for those. And then within the camera, I separate it into frame rate. So I have a folder for my 24 frames per second and a folder for my 60 frames per second. And then in my audio folder, I have it separated between music, sound effects, and any voiceovers. All those things are separated out. That just keeps you organized when you are editing your video. 
Okay, so before we jump into our video and start breaking up the clips and getting the good shots, I'm going to briefly talk about my keyboard shortcuts. My keyboard shortcuts drastically help me when I'm editing and I'm just gonna tell you my main ones that I use. I got these keyboard shortcuts from Sam Colder. If you know his videos, his stuff is amazing. And I learned my keyboard shortcuts from him and it's just such a great system. So I'm just gonna go through that right now. So if we take a look at this and we bring one of our clips into our timeline here, this clip of just my roommate doing push-ups. If I find part of the video that I really like, let's say I like this section right here, on our keyboard shortcuts, I'm gonna select in and out points, which on my shortcuts is three is in, so green button there is in, and four is out. So that will take us out, and then that is the selection of your video that you are dragging into your timeline. So in and out, three and four, and then once you bring that clip into your timeline, if you want to step forward one frame, you're gonna use two, and that brings you forward just one frame. And if you wanna step back a frame, you use one, and that brings you back one frame. So one is back one frame, two forward one frame, three is in, four is out. Then we have Q, W, and E. And if you click E, it will delete everything to the right of your clip, just like how E is to the right of W. And then if you do Q, it will delete everything to the left of your playhead, just like Q is to the left of W. So Q to the left of playhead, E to the right of playhead, and W just a straight up split. Then below that we have ASD, which I use for playing and scrubbing through my footage. So D, plays forward and then if you uh, you know double tap it it'll play quicker at two times four times speed and increase and a does the same thing in reverse and s just pauses and plays your video so this keyboard shortcut layout is super effective when editing because you can rewind go forward pause and play your footage you can you can split the clip you can split the clip and get rid of what's left and right to it you can select in and out points and you can go forward and backwards one frame all right here in the same section that your hand is at. So you don't have to move your hand over from your mouse to the arrow keys or to the J, K, and L, which is what's normally used for playing a clip forward and backwards, or the I and O buttons, which is normally used for in and out. So moving those keyboard shortcuts to that one little area is gonna really speed up your editing. And now let's go ahead and start breaking down some of our clips. And we are going to look through the clip, see what's good. Once we've selected it, we're going to use those shortcuts to select our in and out points. And then we're going to drag that into our timeline. And once we get a little sequence going, and we've taken all our good clips out and gotten rid of the ones that don't work for our film, we are now ready for our second step, which is the hatchet. So in this hatchet stage, this is where you're gonna be taking these clips and trimming them down slightly. So for example, this clip right here, I have him flipping a tire, but I decided that it was too long and I wanted another clip there. So I cut it down. I just have it underneath here so that you can see how, how long I had it initially but I have this other clip over top and cutting on the motion to him flipping the tire there. And so it's small things like that, cutting it down. And for example here, this goes with the beat of the music. And so I just lined up this longer clip of the tire, kind of jumping in and out with the music. I just put a whole clip down there and then cut it on the beat of the music and disabled these clips so they won't be shown in what's underneath, which is him running, is what you're actually going to see. Now we can delete these and it won't make a difference, but just to show you what I was doing there, I'm just cutting it down smaller into what I want. Just like we talked about with the analogy, I'm taking my hatchet and now taking those good clips and cutting them down even further into the video that I like. Along with that, you'll notice that there are some clips that just don't work for your film as well. 
So for example, right here, I decided that this clip worked way better than this tire clip down here. I still use some of it right here, but I didn't want to use too much of it. And I liked going back from the morning run to him working out in the day. And so I did that to add more variety and you just break down good clips even further in this hatchet stage. So even if a clip is really good, you might not use all of it or you might not use it at all just because you have better clips and it just doesn't work for your video. So by the end of this hatchet stage, you should have something that's starting to look like a video. And this is our timeline that we have going here. Once you're at this point, it's time for you to move on to the scalpel or the pocket knife stage where you can do the tiny cutting to really bring out the video. So this is where you're gonna add effects, transitions, color grading, all that fun stuff. Let's take a look at some of the transitions that I used real quick. So in this video, I used mostly hard cuts just cause it worked really well for this film and the look that I was trying to go for. But if I wanted to add a video effect here, I could open up my effects panel and add whatever transition it is that I want and that's going to be part of this stage and you can adjust those transitions just how you like it but you want to make sure the transition isn't cheesy and make sure it actually fits the video that you're making which is why in this film I barely have any transitions other than just cuts. Cuts are honestly some of the best transitions that there are. You don't really need a lot of fancy transitions. It actually often makes your video look worse if you're overusing uh, cheesy fancy transitions. Another little part of our scalpel stage would be small adjustments. For example, on this video clip here that I have of him running, it kind of gets a little shaky and the horizon line gets off. And so I actually fixed that by adjusting the clip to kind of move right around here. You'll see that it kind of is off slightly. It's a little tilted. That's because I went in and I keyframed out the rotation angle and I zoomed in a little bit so that as he was running, it would rotate normally so that that clip looked better. So that's like an example of some small thing that you would do in your pocket knife scalpel stage. Like I said, another part of the scalpel and pocket knife stage is color grading. So if we go into our color grading, you can see that there's a lot that I've done on all of these clips to make them look the way that they are. So if I take off this base color grade, you'll see that these clips look way different afterwards there was a lot more green and I really brought out some of the blues to give it kind of that dramatic look uh, that I'm going for so again we bring it from this to that and I can make a separate video on color grading so there's a lot that goes into color grading and it's something that I'm still working on getting better at every day I'm working on getting better at every aspect of filming every day but color grading is one that I particularly takes me a bit longer because it's something I still struggle with. But a great YouTuber that I would recommend looking at, I think it's like Wazi Quasi, I think is how you say it, I'm not sure. But I will post a link to his channel in the description because if you really want to learn about color grading in DaVinci Resolve, that's your guy, his stuff, great resources. But yeah, color grading is going to do a lot to really make your video pop and it did a lot for this video of mine and I'm glad that I took the time to color grade and figure out what was going to look good for my video. You'll also use a lot of text and graphics in this stage. That's where you'll add those finishing touches. So you'll notice a lot of text and graphics in many of my videos. It's not in this example video that I've gone into, but that's huge to benefit a video. Uh, especially if it's like for something like YouTube or for corporate or anything like that. Good text is huge. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful about the editing process. There's a lot that goes into editing and I kind of just touched the surface of a lot of different editing principles in this video. But the main thing I want you to understand is the importance of the editing process and having a smooth, productive workflow that's going to help you work quicker and get projects done in a more efficient manner. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. So as you continue to keep the chainsaw, hatchet, scalpel pocket knife method in mind, it will 
drastically improve your editing workflow and I hope you're able to learn something.